All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Hardy Weinberg Problems. Hey, I'm gonna walk you through this entire set of problems and I'll show you how to do every single one. You are welcome to do the problems with me. You are welcome to pause and do the problem and then check and see how I did the problem. Or you're welcome to just fast forward through the problem that you're struggling with. So use me however you want. Um, I have also posted the answer key right on Moodle so you can just take a look if you don't need the whole video. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get you started on all these problems and then um, use this video as, as you see fit. Um, so I'm going to start out by problem number one says, write the Hardy-Weinberg equation at the top of your paper. So I think that that's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So the Hardy-Weinberg, um, if you remember from the notes, is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared. Oops. Wow, my handwriting's pretty messy there. Um, when P plus Q equals one. And I could say that this whole thing equals one. You don't have to say it that way, but you can say it that way. I usually skip that part. The other part that I want us to remember um, is that um, what P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared stand for. So P squared, I'm just going to choose the letter A today. So those would be the homozygous dominant. So I'm going to show two capital letters that homo means the same, dominant, they're two capital letters. The 2PQ part of the equation are for the heterozygote. So that would be a big and a little. And then the Q squared part of the equation is for the homozygous recessive. So two little ones. So I'm going to reference back to this equation over and over again. And I think actually I'm going to try to circle this equation and see if I can drag it with me to the next problem. I wonder if I can make it smaller. Oh, this is a slick little piece of technology. Okay, so I'm going to move the whole screen up. I thought I could move the screen up and I cannot. There we go. And I'm going to grab... Not that. Let's try that again. I'm going to grab this entire equation and I'm going to bring it over here. And I've got something here that doesn't belong. Let me try. Sorry, you guys. I'm learning how to use this stuff and I'm not very good at it yet. So I want an eraser and I want to erase this business. I didn't realize I had already had writing on there. So now let's go back to this. Let's Grab, oops, grab this entire section, bring it over there, there. That way we can see it off to the side um, while we're working. Okay, so problem number one, I'm going to go ahead, or problem number two, I guess it says. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose a new color for that problem. Let's do it in green just so it stands out. It says 50,000 infants have been tested for PKU, a deadly recessive genetic disorder that causes brain functioning to diminish every time the baby digests, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. 7,000 of these babies have elevated levels of phenylalanine in their blood. What is the frequency of the PKU allele in the population? What does that question even mean? Well, I put it in other words for you. So in other words, what is Q? Q is the letter that represents the recessive allele. So how do we solve for Q? Well, I want you to remember that Q, and I, I say it this way to help you remember it, Q squared is the homozygous recessive population. So anytime that you want to find Q, you just take the square root of that. So let's take a look. We had, out of a population of 50,000, we had 7,000 that had um, elevated levels of phenylalanine. So I'm going to write it like this. 7,000 out of 50,000 equals Q squared. Those are our Q squareds. So I'm going to enter that into the calculator and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go a little faster. You should have your calculator with you quickly. Um, I'm going to look over at my answer key and see what it is so that I don't have to punch it in. It looks like Q squared is 0.14. So that's Q squared. I'm going to say it that way every time just to help you get the hang of this. So the question is saying, in other words, what is Q? Well, this problem is almost done. I'm not going to go through. I don't need the entire Hardy-Weinberg problem. I just need a part of it. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. We'll change colors, make that stand out. We'll take the square root of both sides. So the square root of Q squared is Q. If you take the square root of a square, they cancel each other out. So they're gone now. Okay, and whatever the square root of 0.14 is, and when I type that into my calculator, I'm cheating, um, the square root is 0.37. So what did we just figure out? We figured out the frequency of the recessive allele. So the... Um, the number is, frequency is always listed as a decimal, but we could also write 
37% of the um, alleles in the population are the recessive. 30% of the alleles present are recessive. That's another way of writing it, if that's a if that means more to you. All right, so that, that problem was really easy to answer. So let's move on to the next one. I'm going to grab this little Hardy Weinberg thing again, see if I can circle it again, and we'll bring it to our next problem. Nope, that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. And there we go. Move me a little bit, circle this. I'll see if I can get more efficient at this as we go, everybody. Okay, so now we have a new problem. Um, it says, in humans, RH positive individuals have an RH um, antigen on their red blood cells, while RH negative individuals do not. RH positive phenotype is produced by a dominant allele called RH. If 84% of the individuals are RH positive, the dominant allele, that's super important. What are the frequencies of the RH allele and the lowercase RH allele, which are the recessives? In other words, that was a whole bunch of blah, blah, blah. What are P and Q? P is the dominant allele and Q is the recessive allele. What are the frequencies of the P and the Q alleles in this population? So we're going to use the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Um, the part that's really important is that you understand you always, always, always have to solve for the recessives in the population. So it says that 84% have the dominant trait. That means that 84%, so we could say point, oh, I'm not going to type, there we go. We could say that 0.84 are the um, big R, big R's, and the big R, little r's. That's 84% of the population you are either homozygous dominant or um, heterozygous. They all show the dominant trait. We're trying to figure out what's the frequency of just the dominant trait and what's the frequency of the recessive trait, which would be the 16% that are little r, little r. Um, because the dominants have big R's and little r's, that's confusing. It's got two different variables in it. So I, I just trust me on this. Every single time that you do a Hardy-Weinberg problem, every single time, you're going to solve for the recessives first, and then you can solve for the dominants and the heterozygotes. So you can solve for Q squareds first, and then you can solve for the P squared or the 2PQ. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and erase what I have written here. Make that all go away, and we'll try it one more time. So this time, let's pick a new color too. We'll go with pink. Um, notice that it says 84%. So that's the same as 84 out of 100 are the dominants. Um, but we can't use the dominants because that's big R, big R, and big R, little r. So instead, we're going to use 16 out of 100. Those, everybody, are our Q squareds. Let that sink in for a second. If 84% are dominant, what percent are recessive? 16%, which is the same as 16 out of 100. So if you like to write it 16 out of 100, if you want to just write it 0.16, that would have worked also. So those are our Q squared. So Q squared is 0.16. Q squared is 0.16. The question asks, what are P and Q? So let's find Q first. So the way that we always find Q is by taking the square root of Q squared. When you take the square root, let's see if I can make this go up. I'm not very good at, how do I get this to go up? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, if we take the square root of a square, then we know Q is equal to, and the square root of 0.16 is Four. So we've answered one part of the question, which is the frequency of the recessive allele is 0.4 or 40% of the population has the recessive allele. Now, the question is also asking, what is P? So let's do that. If we have Q is 0.4, we learned from the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Can I move this? There we go. We learned from the Hardy-Weinberg equation that P plus Q is 1. So if we have Q, then 1 minus P is Q, and we know that Q is 0.4. So what minus point, what minus, sorry, 1 minus what is 0.4? So P must be 0.6. When you add those two together, you get 1. P plus Q equals 1. 
So P and Q, Q was 0.4 and P was 0.6. 60% of the alleles in this population are the dominant allele. 40% of the alleles in this population are the recessive allele. Still, we haven't used the full Hardy-Weinberg equation yet. We're just using parts of it right now just to kind of get you the hang of it. All right, I'm going to drag this to the next problem. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I am going to get better at this, I promise. I'm going to drag this down here. Good. Try a little bit higher. Okay, the next one says the, and what number are we on? I should scoot this over a little bit. The allele for a hitchhiker's thumb is dominant over straight thumb in a population of 1,000 individuals. One more time. The allele for a hitchhiker's thumb is dominant. So I'm interested in the recessives. How many in this population have straight thumbs? So it says in a population of 1,000 individuals, 510 show the dominant phenotype. I don't care about the dominance. I care about the recessives. So if 510 show the dominant phenotype, what percent show the recessive phenotype? So, or what number show the recessive phenotype? So if 510 show the, re the dominant, then that means that 490 out of 1,000 are my recessives, my Q squareds. So it says, how many individuals would you expect for each of the three possible genotypes for this trait? In other words, what are P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared? Now we get to use that entire equation. So right now, so far, we have solved, working on this, we have solved that Q squared is um, 490 divided by 1,000, which is the same as 0.49. And you know what? That's an easel square root um, problem. So now I'm going to switch colors just to make it jump out at us visually. To solve for Q, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of Q squared is Q. I'm going to be very repetitive, repetitive about that. The square root of 0.49 is 0.7. We also know that P plus Q is 1. So if we have Q is 0.7, we could say P equals 1 minus Q. So 1 minus 0.7 is 0.3. P is 0.3. So now we have P and Q. So now we just plug them into the original equation. We've already solved Q squared. Q squared is um, 0.49. So let's let's do them all. So um, I'm going to switch colors one more time. So let's try orange this time. So Q squared is 0.49. And it asked for... How many individuals would you expect for each of the three possible traits? So we already know that one. That one's already 490, but I'll show you how we know that. So if 49% of the individuals um, out of 1,000 have the recessive trait, then we just do 0.49 times 1,000, and we get 490 individuals have the recessive trait. Our, let's What letter are we using here? Hitchhiker's thumb, so we'll say little h, little h. No, I don't want to say it that way. Let's let's call it homozygous recessive. So let's try that again. The individuals are homo recessive. Okay, so we've got Q squared. Now let's see if we can do P squared. Remember back here we said um, P is 0.3. So P squared would be the same as 0.3 squared. And 0.3 squared is going to be um, 0.3 squared. I think is that 0.09? Did I do that right? My other computer fell asleep. Hold on just a second. Sorry, everybody. I should never let it fall asleep. All right. Um, yep, 0.3 squared, sorry, is 0.09. So that is 0.09 times 1,000 to figure out how many individuals that would be. And so that would mean 90 individuals are homozygous dominant. Okay, and then the last one is the two PQs. Remember the two PQs are the um, heterozygotes. So we have, we have um, P and we have Q, and now we need to find, making this go a little bit higher. So we have, um, 2 times P times Q equals, so 2 times, we said P was 0.3, so we're going to put 0.3 right here, and Q we said was 0.7, so we're going to put 0.7 right there, 
And I can do that one in my head, thankfully. So um, 0.3 times 0.7 is 0.21 times 2 is 0.42. In other words, 42% of the population is heterozygotes. Now we're going to multiply that by 1,000 because there were 1,000 in this population. And we're going to get 420 were heterozygotes, heterozygotes. If I add the homozygous recessives plus the homozygous dominance plus the heterozygotes, I should get 1,000. And in fact, I do. So I know that I'm done with this particular problem. Okay, let's um, move on to the next one. Let's see how I move on. I think I moved two fingers. Is that right? No. Oh, I need to go to the next page. Is that how I do it? That is how I do it. All right, make it big. Look at me learning how to use technology, ladies and gents. Oh, except my... Let's see if I can grab... Can I grab this? Hold on. Try that again. Sorry, fast forward through this section until I get it, you guys. Um, I'm going to cut it. I wonder if I can paste it on my next page because I'm not sure that I can. We'll find out. Is there a little paste button? I don't think there is. Okay, well, hopefully you remember the equation by now. So P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared um, equals 1 and P plus Q equals 1. So if not, reference the top of your paper over and over again. All right, so remember that throughout this, we are trying to, um, we're trying to always look for the recessive. So let's look at this problem. If 9%, whenever I see percent, I know that it's something out of 100. So 9 out of 100. So if 9% of an African population is born with a severe form of sickle cell anemia, we're going to call that little s, little s in this case. That's the recessive, so that's what we're looking for. What percent of the population will be more resistant to malaria because they are heterozygotes for the sickle cell gene? In other words, what are we looking for? We're looking for the heterozygotes, so we're looking for 2PQ. That means we have to solve for Q and for P. Always start with the recessives, and conveniently, that's what they gave us. So you can do this in two different ways that you want. You've got to convert that percent into a decimal. So if you're happier, which I often am, writing it as 9 out of 100, fabulous. Write it as 9 out of 100. If you're happier writing it as 0 0.09, that's great. But 0 0.09 is your Q squared. So now we want to solve for Q all by itself. So if we have Q squared to solve for Q, we just take the square root of both and we learn that Q is equal to, and the square root of 0 0.09 is 0 0.3. I always have to check, decimals screw me up sometimes. So we know that Q is 0 0.3. We know that P plus Q is one. So P must be 0.7. P and Q add up to one. So P must be 0.7. The question is asking for 2PQ. What's the frequency of 2PQ? And does it say? It says what percentage of the population. So we'll get to that at the end. So we've got P and we've got Q, so we're ready to go. So 2 times P times Q is 2. P, we said, was 0.7, it's right there, so 0.7. Q is right here, 0.3. Oh, it's just like the last problem. Um, 0.7 times 0.3 is 21, times 2 is 0.42. So 0.42, when you leave it in a decimal form, that's called the frequency. But they want it in a percent, so in order to do it in percent, we just multiply it by 100, and the answer would be 42% are heterozygotes. And that's what the question was looking for. We are done with that one. Piece of cake, right? All right, let's scroll up to number six. The ability to taste PTC, I'm switching colors here. The ability to taste PTC is due to a single dominant allele, T. You sampled 215 individuals in biology and determined that 150 could detect the bitter taste. Wait a minute. Is that the dominant or the recessive? The ability to taste PTC is dominant. So those are the dominants. We want the recessive. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so 65 could not. Aha. Those are the recessives. Those are the ones we want to be working with. 
What percent of biology students are probably carriers of the little t gene? Hmm, are you homozygous or heterozygous if you're a carrier? Those are the heterozygotes. So we are looking again for 2PQ. That's what we're trying to solve. Okay, so we know that the recessives are the 65. So we've got 65 out of how many were in our, our sample? 215. Those are our recessives. Those are our Q squareds. So when we do 65 divided by 215, it is 0 0.30. You'd have to enter that into your calculator. I'm cheating by looking at my answer key. All right, um, so that's Q squared. So how are we going to solve for Q? The way I say it, take the square root of both sides. Q is whatever the square root of 0.3 is, and I'm going to cheat. And the square root of 0.3 is 0.55. That's one that does not square root very easily. So we need to find P and Q for um, P and Q to find the heterozygotes. So we've got Q. So now we need to find P. We know P plus Q always equals 1. If Q is 0.55, then 1 minus Q must be P. So 1 minus 0.55 is 0.45. So now we have P and Q. So now we're going to put them into the um, equation, 2PQ. So 2 times P was, we said right here, P was 0.45 and Q was 0.55. All right, and then when we multiply those together, we get 0 0.495. That's the frequency of the heterozygotes in that biology population. The question said, what percent of biology students? So to convert a frequency to a percent, we just multiply it by 100. And would we, we would say 49.5% are carriers of the gene. Good enough. All right, moving on. I'll see if I can go a little bit faster now that I'm getting the hang of this. Um, the allele for, let me switch colors one more time, green. The allele for a widow's peak, so that's a little pointy hairline, is dominant over the straight hairline. So we're interested in straight. We're interested in the recessives. In a population of 500 individuals, 25% show the recessive phenotype. That's what we're interested in. How many individuals would you expect to be homozygous dominant and heterozygous for, heterozygous for the trait? So homozygous dominant, those are the P squared, and heterozygotes are the 2PQ. So that's what we're looking for. So they already gave us that 25% are the recessive phenotype. So that means that um, Q squared in this case is 0.25. We don't have to do any other math on that because they kind of gave it to us. So Q squared is 0.25. So to figure out Q, we would square root both sides and we get Q, the square root is 0.05. Did I do that right or is it 0.5? I think it's 0.5, I screwed that up. Yeah, 0.5, sorry, let me fix that for us. Try that one more time, 0.5. So Q is 0.5, P plus Q is one. So one minus 0.5 is P and that's 0.5. So both P and Q are 0.5 in our circumstance here. So the first one we're gonna solve for is the P squared, the homozygous dominance. So that's 0.5 squared. So that answer is 0.25. So that means um, 25 percent of the population also are homozygous dominant. 25 percent were recessive and 25 percent are homozygous dominant. Um, and it asks how many individuals would you expect? So instead of percent, we're going to multiply times the population. The population in this case was 500. So 0.25 of 500 ends up being is that 125, I think? Yeah, 125. So 125 individuals are homozygous dominant. And now we want to look at the heterozygotes, which are the 2PQ. Same question here. So 2 times P was 0.5. Q was also 0.5 this time. So 0.5 times 0.5 is 25 times 2 is 50. So 0.5. 50. 
50% of the population is going to be the heterozygotes, but they ask out of 500 how many people are heterozygotes. So that would be 250 individuals are heterozygotes. All right, moving on. Oops, how do I do this? I forget every time. Okay, question number eight. On a hillside, there are 800 flowers. Um, there are 490 blue and 10 white. The first thing I'm thinking is what's recessive and what's dominant? Let's read on. Blue color is dominant to white. Ah. What is the frequency of each color allele in the population? Oh, and we're going back to just a simple P and Q question. So 10 out of the 500, 10 out of the 500 were the recessives, were the Q squareds. And so that is um, 10 out of 500 is 0 0.02. That's Q squared. This question is just asking for Q. So we're going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides and Q, the square root of 0 0.02, where am I, is 0.14. That's the square root of 0 0.02. And then remember P plus Q is one. So one minus Q is P. So P must be 0.8. Eight, six. I think I did that right. Yep. So we found P and Q and we are done with this problem. So the frequency of the Q, the frequency of the recessive allele is about 14% and the frequency of the dominant allele is about 86%. All right. Let's scroll up. Why does that never work on my first try? Why, why do I have so much trouble making it go up? Oh, because I'm at the bottom of the page, I bet. I bet that's it. Okay. I can't make it go any higher. So we're going to try this differently. Okay, let's try another problem. Um, allele B, capital B, for white wool is dominant over the black allele. In a sample of 900 sheep, 891 are white and 9 are black. Do I want the recessives or the dominants? The recessives. So I want the 9 out of the um, 900. Those are my Q squareds. All right. Um, so it says, what are the frequencies of the dominant and recessive? Oh, again, all we need are P and Q. So not a big deal. We know nine out of 900 are our Q squareds. So nine out of 100 or 900 is 0 0.01. Did I do the math on that right? Yep. And then we need to take the, that's Q squared. And so now we want to take the square root of both sides to figure out Q. Q, the square root of 0 0.01 is just plain old 0.1. And we know that P plus Q equals 1. So 1 minus Q, Q was 0.1. So that's P, and P must be 0.9. So we have our two answers. Approximately 10% of the alleles in the population are the recessives, and approximately 90% of the alleles in the population are the dominants. All right, we're going to go to the next page. Make that big. There we go. Problem number 10, let me get my picture out of the way. On the prairie, there is a grass population of 5,000 individuals. Round seeds in this species are completely dominant over long seeds. In this population, 4,550 have round seeds and 450 have long seeds. We want the recessive, so we want the 450. So we're gonna do 450 out of 1, that is our Q squared, and I can just do that one in the top of my head. So Q squared is 0.45. I haven't even finished reading the question, have I? It says, what is the frequency of each allele? So it wants P and Q again, and it wants what's the percentage of plants that are homozygous dominant and heterozygous. So this one requires a whole lot of um, sections to this. So first of all, we're going to solve for Q squared. And oops, I've got the right color here. Never mind. So I'm sorry, Q squared is 0.45. So to solve for Q, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 0.45, give me a moment. Uh-oh. Oh, I screwed this all up, you guys. I'm sorry. Fast forward. Um, crap all up. It wasn't out of 1,000. It was out of 5,000. So let me... Start over again. I'm really sorry. I just, and I can't go back on this. Oh, maybe I could edit it later. Help me remember that I screwed this one up. Okay, so we'll try this one again. So it was 450 plants 
out of 5,000. Those are our Q squareds, and I can't do that on the top of my head. Um, so that would be 0 0.09. Now, if we were, that's the Q squared. If we were to take the um, square root of both sides, we'd find out that Q is equal to 0.3. Three, that means P is 0.7 because P plus Q always equals 1. So we now have our P and our Q. That's the first section. We're done with that. Now it asks what percent of the plants are homozygous dominant. So those are our P squareds. So we're going to take P squared. And so we know P was 0.7 and we're going to square it. That is 0.3. Four, nine. That means 49, or we could multiply it, I guess. We'll change that to a multiply. Multiply it by 100, and we know that 49% are homozygous dominant. Hum dumb. All right, and then the second part of the question asks, um, what percent are heterozygotes? Heterozygotes are the 2PQ part of the equation. So we do 2 times P was 0.7, Q was 0.3, so 0.42. We've had that several times already. So that is the same as 42% are the heterozygotes. Okay, moving on. Question number 11. In Drosophila, fruit fly, the allele for normal wing length is dominant over the allele for short wings. So we're interested in the short wings. In a population of 1,000 individuals, 360 show the recessive phenotype. Hopefully you're starting to see how incredibly repetitive these get. The recessives are 360 out of 1,000, so Q squared is 0.36. I haven't even read the rest of the question, but I know that I'm going to want to um, take the square root of Q no matter what the question asks. So Q is 0.6, and that means P is 0.4 because P plus Q equals 1. Um, and I'm just double checking, it, and it is asking for how many individuals, oh, that's interesting, how many individuals would you expect would be homozygous dominant? Okay, again, the homozygous dominant part of the equation are the P squareds. So we said P was 0.4, so we're going to do 0.4 squared, so that's 0.16, so 16%, but that's not what it asked. It said how many individuals so in that case, you take the frequency, the decimal, times the population. In this case, the population was 1,000 individuals. So that means 160, and I need to double check my math on that. Yep, and 160 individuals are homodom. 160 individuals are homozygous dominant for that trait. All right. Question number 12. Let's see what we can do. In corn, yellow kernel, um, kernel color is governed by a dominant allele. Not interested. It's dominant. We want the recessives. White by its recessive allele. A random sample of 1,000 kernels from a population that is in equilibrium, blah, 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 reveals that 910 are yellow. Not interested. They're dominant. And 90 are white. So we do 90 out of 1,000. Those are our Q squareds. And that is what, 0 0.09? Did I do that right? Yeah, 0 0.09. Those are our Q squareds. I haven't even finished reading the problem, but I always need Q, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 0 0.09 is 0 0.3. That means P, again, we've already had a couple that look like this, is 0 0.7. And I'm going to double check. Yep. And the question asks, so it asks for P and Q. So we've solved P and Q already. And then it says percentage of heterozygotes. So heterozygotes in the equation are the two PQs. So two times we said P was 0.7. We said Q right here was 0.3. So that's 0.42 times 100 to make it the percent. 42% are, what was that, heterozygotes. And we are done. See how much faster they go as we go? Okay, problem number 13, the last one on this page. Within a population of butterflies, the color brown is dominant over the color white. Then I'm interested in the whites. 40% of all butterflies are white. You can choose to write this in two ways. You could do 40 over 100 for the recessives, or you could do 0.4 for the recessives. 
and those are the recessive, so those are the Q squared. Those are the Q squared, so we want to take the square root of both sides to get square um, to get just Q by itself, and the square root of 0.4 I think is something weird. Yep, the square root of 0.4 is 0.63, which is really weird. So that means one. Remember, P plus Q equals one. So one minus this 0.63 gives us P, and so P is 0.37. So the question is asking, calculate the percentage of butterflies that are heterozygous and homozygous dominant. So we've got Q here, and we've got P here. Now we just plug it into the equation. So heterozygotes are, I'm going to switch colors, heterozygotes are 2PQ. So 2 times the P was 0.37, the Q was 0.63, and when you multiply those together, I cheat by looking at my answer key, and the answer is 0.47, and then to make it a percent, whoops, that's times 100, is 47% are hetero. And then to figure out the homozygous dominant, it would be P squared. So that's the P, remember, was 0.37, and we're going to square that, which is an awkward number, so I'm going to cheat and look, and it says um, that's about 0.14. So, oops, if we multiply it by 100 to get the percent, 14% are um, dumb. Almost, I guess, dominant. All right, last page. And if I remember, yeah, these are the challenge problems. So let's take a look at these challenge problems. Um, let's open it up as wide as I can. And give me a second to pull it up on my answer key here too. So it says, the gene for albinism is known to be a recessive allele. In Michigan, nine people in a sample of 10,000 were found to have albino phenotypes. So that means they're the recessives. The other 9,991 had skin pigmentation normal for their ethnic group. How many out of the 10,000 people in the sample above were expected to be heterozygous for pigmentation? So the first thing we're going to do is the, the 9 out of 10,000, those are our recessives. Those are our Q squareds. So 9 out of 10,000 is 0 0.0009. So now to solve for Q by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So Q is... 0.03. Remember that P plus Q is 1. So if we do 1 minus 0.03, that gives us P. So that means P is 0 0.97. I'm going to double check my math on that. Yep. So 0.97 is P. So now the question asks for the heterozygotes. I'll switch colors again. So 2PQ are the heterozygotes. So 2 times P was 0.97. Q was 0.03, and when we multiply that together, we get 0.0582. So that's the frequency, but the question says how many out of the 10,000? It doesn't ask for frequency or percent, it asks how many. So in that case, you take the frequency and multiply it by the size of the population, which is 10,000, and so that would be 582 people are heterozygotes, hetero for that one. And we are done with that part, with part A. Making sure, yep. Okay, and now we're going to go to part B. A similar survey was carried out in Wisconsin, but only 2,500 people were surveyed. If LEO frequencies are the same in Wisconsin as they are in Michigan, how many people would you expect to have the albino phenotypes in this sample? Well, the albinos are the um, recessive. So we said in the previous problem, I'm going to point back up that, um, that the Q squareds were 0. 0.0009. So Q squared. 0, 0, 0, 0.0009. But this time we only have 2,500 people. So this is the frequency of the recessives of the albinos. 
but this time we're going to multiply it by a population of 2,500 instead of 10,000, which is what they had in the original problem. So 0.009 times 2,500 is 2.25. So we have, um, that's an awkward number. So we would say two to three people will be recessive in Wisconsin. I don't care how you write it, but that's the answer. All right, moving back up again. Number 15, a rare disease due to a recessive allele, which is lethal when homozygous, occurs with a frequency of one in a million. So the only hard thing about this problem is that it's tiny numbers. And when they become decimals and when you enter them into your calculator, people freak out for some reason. So you're solving the problem exactly the same way you've done this every single time. So a frequency of one in a million, those are the recessives. So one out of one million, just the way you've been doing it all along. Those are your Q squareds. So that equals 0.00000. I don't remember how many zeros. Is that one, two, three, four, five? I did it right. One. That's your Q squared. So if we want to solve for Q, which we always do, I didn't even finish reading the question. Sorry, but we always solve for Q. We're going to take the square root. So the square root Q equals 0 0.00. Is it two zeros? Yep, two zero one. So that's Q. Now, let me go back to the question and figure out what we're trying to solve. How many individuals, so not a frequency or percent, in a town of 14,000 can be expected to carry? Oh, carry. That means heterozygotes. So we need 2PQ for this. That's what we're going to be looking for. So we have Q. Remember that P plus Q is 1. So to solve for P, we do 1 minus Q, which is 0 0.001. That gives us P. So P is a very weird number. P is 0 0.999, 999. So we've got Q and we've got P. I'm going to switch colors to give our eyeballs a break. 2PQ is 2 times P is 0 0.999 and Q is 0 0.001. When you multiply that all out, where am I? You get 0.001998. Oh, KJ, what does that mean? I'm so freaked out. Okay, so this is what you do every single time. It didn't ask for percent. If it did ask for percent, you would multiply it by 100, and you would say 0.1998% um, would have that allele. But this time it asks for how many individuals. So you take the frequency times the size of the population, which is 14,000. So when I multiply those numbers together, I get, give me a second, 27.92. didn't say that quite right. 27.972. So we would say approximately 28 people in that town of 14,000 are heterozygotes. Approximately 28 people. All right, last question, everybody. That's a good thing because my throat is getting tired. Goodness. Okay, after graduation, you and 19 friends build a raft. How many people is that total? 20. Sail to a deserted island and start a new population totally isolated from the world. That's an example of the founder effect. Two of your friends carry, that is, they are heterozygotes. A carrier is heterozygotes, so they are the two PQs. They carry the recessive cystic fibrosis allele, the CF allele, which in homozygous, um, homozygotes causes cystic fibrosis. Assuming that the frequency of that, this allele does not change as the population grows, how common will cystic fibrosis be on your island? So what we're looking for... Um, are the Q squareds. How common, um, what's the frequency of the Q squareds on this island? So let's back up and see how we solve this. So give me just a second. So um, it says two of your friends are carriers. That means 18 out of your 20 friends are actually homozygous dominant. There are no recessives on this island, or it would have told us that. So there are no Q squareds in this initial population. So this time, because we know that two of the people are the carriers, we know that 18 out of the 20 are the homozygous dominants. So this is the only time, the only time 
that we can actually solve for the dominant instead of the recessive. There are no homozygous recessives on this island. So this time we're going to solve for the homozygous dominance. So 18 out of 20 is P squared. So if we figure that out, 18 divided by 20 is 0.9. That's P squared. So if we want to find P by itself, we take the square root. And the square root of 0 0.9 is 0 0.948. Nine. That's P. That's the frequency of the dominant allele in your population. Now we do 1 minus P to get Q, and P was 0.949. I didn't write that very well. So Q in this case is a tiny number, 0 0.051. So the question was, what's the frequency of the homozygous recessives? Those are the Q squareds. So for the first time, we're actually solving for the Q squares. We haven't been doing that all along. So here's Q, 0 0.051, and we square it. And 0 0.051 squared is 0 0.0026. So the question says, um, how common will cystic fibrosis be on your island? There's several ways to answer that. You could say it would have a frequency of 0 0.0026, or you could say 0.26% of the population will have cystic fibrosis. They'll be homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive for that. And then if you had a population, we could multiply it by the population and tell you the number of individuals that will be homozygous recessive, the number of individuals that will have cystic fibrosis in your population. Whew, that was a long one, you guys. We are all done. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and shut down now.